we're ordering it and let's say that we're ordering product uh number one i put pro produce <laughs> look at that oh my goodness oh my goodness that's okay let's say that we're buying uh uh 10 of those so at a rate of 75 which populates automatically and i'm not going to put uh, a class we're not buying it for a particular customer here so we'll keep that as is and then maybe i'm also buying product uh number two produce number two sorry about that i did that just to get a laugh out of people that i put it in there product number two produce two we sell some produce okay okay so then we've got 150 of those and what's this gonna do uh nothing in terms of the financial statements it's just a request that we would then send to the vendor and then they would send us these items once we get the items with the bill in it that's when we would record uh something to our financial transactions at that point so in terms of our flowchart we would be here requesting the inventory no financial transaction at that point let's do one more let's save it let's do a save and new and let's see let's say this was vendor vendor uh p2 tab and same kind of thing but this happened on 120525 and the item that we're going to be purchasing is going to be the the date is actually 12525 i think i got that right okay so then the items let's say we're going to purchase product number three and let's say we're, we're going to get another uh, 30 of these let's just say and then we'll also purchase product number one and i know this was two vendors for the same product but just to get something on the table here so there we have it so let's say save and close this will just be a request that we would send out possibly by email to the vendor so let's save it and close it and then we can track those requests in the sales tab and we can look at all sales this is one place we could go and i can say i want to look at the the transactions and possibly be searching for the transactions of actually hold on not the sales tab we're in the expenses tab now because we're buying the stuff and then i could go to the expenses here and then filter by the purchase orders so i could say filter by the purchase orders and there's our request forms that uh that have sent out on 12 31 and 12 5 12 31 is that what i wanted let's change this date to the beginning of the month here i wanted to do it on 12 1 not 12 31 save and close it how about that doesn't really matter but there we have it we can also track it by going to the vendors and we can look for the vendors that have the uh, open purchase orders up top and so then we can track them next step we're going to receive the inventory in our actually warehouse now again this might be different if we had if we had an e-commerce kind of situation because you might use some other system to to help you to manage the inventory so so you might not be dealing with the physical inventory so again that means that you're going to have to adjust adjust your system a little bit which might be easier because you might be doing this uh managing of the inventory the count somewhere else and we'll talk about how to pull it in so that's where one of the differences will be but when we receive the inventory that's when i'm going to put it on the books with a bill so i'm going to create a bill with this and we're going to say all right now we've got the inventory i want to create a bill quickbooks it's not doing it let me do it again create a bill all right so there we go so now it's made uh the bill from it and i'm going to go ahead and pull in the data that's on the right on the right attached to it so now i've pulled in the data for the bill now a bill means that it's going to increase the accounts payable so i've got the vendor the bill date 12 5 that's fine it's not going to go into a category i'm going to minimize this it's instead going to go into the uh item down below so it pulled the items in this is actually going to record a transaction increasing 
the accounts receivable because it's a, I mean, accounts payable because it's a bill. The other side's gonna go into the inventory account because that's where we told the items to go to when we set up the items. And it's gonna track the sub ledger for the units of inventory in QuickBooks. So let's say save and close. And if I check that out, I can go over here and say, run it, run the, the balance sheet. And you can see the accounts payable went up because now we owe the bill. It hasn't yet hit the checking account. If I go into that by drilling down, there it is. I can go back into that bill. Boom, bill, baby. There it is. I don't know, I had a lot of bees in there. I wanted to... Anyway, so I'm gonna close this back out and then back and exit. And then we wanna go into the inventory has gone up because that's normally what happens when we purchase inventory. It put it in by each line item of inventory, even though they're on the same bill. So we can track the two line items. Okay, let's go close that up back. And is there anything on the income statement? Nothing yet on the income statement. However, we do have another report because the income statement will be impacted not when we buy the inventory, but when we sell the inventory on a perpetual inventory system. So let's duplicate this tab over here and then go down to reports and just check the inventory summary. Inventory summary report. I'm just going to type in inventory summary and I'm going to make it as of 123125 and run it. Okay, so now we've got our inventory tracking by the products here and then uh, the, the asset value and the average amount. So this is giving us the quantity that should tie out to the quantities that we have on hand that we can count and verify. And it's also gonna give us the amount, the dollar amount of the cost, not the sales price that we can then tie into our uh, balance sheet over here. It should match basically our balance sheet. Now, this is the part that gets somewhat redundant to some degree, because again, if you were using a Shopify kind of system, you might have some other system that's tracking at least the units uh, of inventory. And so you might not. So do you really need to pull in all that data and have to add the items and have to add uh, basically bills and whatnot in order to record, in order to get this information into QuickBooks again. So that's one of the issues that we'll be dealing with. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the first tab and let's go back on over here and let's do it for the second one. We're gonna create a bill for it and do the same thing. I'm gonna pull that in, adding it and 12.5, that's fine. This is gonna increase accounts payable and it's gonna and it's gonna increase inventory and it's gonna also affect our sub ledger tracking by dollar amount that should tie out to the balance sheet as well as by units.